Namaste and welcome to day 4 of 30 days of AppRight. Today we are going to look at the AppRight dashboard. So in the last episode we installed AppRight and then we talked about different microservices of AppRight. Today we'll be looking at the AppRight dashboard. When you shut down your computer and if you log in again and if we run docker ps the app right should be automatically running if somehow if it is not running what you can do is you can go to the folder that you have installed app right for me it's document slash app right and here you can run docker compose up dash d if app right containers are not running this will start the app right containers if something has changed this will recreate different containers for me it's recreating various app right containers this is how you can run your already installed app right instance so once the app right is running we can go to our browser and access it using localhost it will be redirected to https and in the last episode we had already accepted this insecure certificate so we are directly taken to the sign in page but this is the first time so we don't have any account let's create new account i needed to accept the certificate again accept and we are in the sign up page so here let me use 30 days of app right as the name just using the username password i'll use simple password because we are in development mode accept and sign up i don't need to save it so this is the front page that you will land once you log in this is where your various projects will be displayed and you can create multiple projects so one app right instance with one app right instance you can serve multiple projects so you can make various different mobile apps web apps or even backend applications by using various by creating various different projects here so let us create our first project so i'll name it 30 days of app right once it's created it will navigate us to the recently created project this is the home page for your app right project where you are greeted with a beautiful graph that shows different metrics for your project like number of requests handled bandwidth used number of functions executions tasks users storage documents in your database all those things and you can switch to different time period to view the metrics and also you have platform share this is where we can add our web and flutter platforms this tells app right to trust the request coming from these platforms that you have added and app right blocks the origins or blocks the request from the applications and domains that you have not added here in the platform and in the web this also fixes the cross origin request issues now let us start with the first item in the sidebar the first item is database database allows us to create collection create and edit our collections view the documents even create documents so let us create a collection here let's call it let's call it tracker once the collection is created we need to add rules so rules are different columns in our database we can add a rule so let's name it user this is the level user id and key will be let's make it user id type text create and let's add another field so amount 
amount and this can be numeric create and we need to add permission so read access for tracker we want let's say we want role member to be able to read and write access also role member we'll learn more about these permissions and these database rules in the upcoming episode as well today in this episode we are just giving the overview of these features so if i tap update our database rule is our collection is now created and if we go to documents tab we can add new document so we can add user id amount and each document has its own permission as well once we add it it's listed here and we can edit it we can update it we can delete it as well right here from the console or you can always use api to handle those things next item we have is the storage this is where we can manage all the files that are uploaded to our server we can also upload using this plus button we can upload files to our server i don't think i have any files here so let me just upload docker compose file read access everyone write access right now let's just give it to everyone and create so this file is uploaded i can download here or open this file in new window this will again download the ml file and if this was an image it would show the preview and we can also edit the existing file permissions and we can delete existing files this is storage now the third item is the users section where we can manage users teams add users to teams and we can also see various auth providers that appright supports so there are tons all the major OAuth providers are supported out of the box like Apple, Bitbucket, Discord, Facebook, GitLab, Google, GitHub, LinkedIn. So all those providers are supported. And in users, we can add new users. In teams, we can add new teams and invite users to our teams. Using this, we can manage our users we can add them to different groups provide them with different roles in each group so user management is handled by appright by default and all these actions can be done through the api appright provides a nice syntax for oauth provider adapter so you can add more oauth providers on your own and also create a pr in the appright repository so that we can support more and more what providers next item on the list is the functions these are cloud functions that allows us to extend our appright instance so in appright we have tons of environment for cloud functions like node.js php ruby python deno dart dotnet and more are coming you can enable or disable these function runtime environments using appright environment variable so let's quickly create a demo function in node.js so once you create a function you can deploy and here are the ways you can deploy appright functions you can deploy appright manually by uploading your tar file or you can deploy using a appright official appright cli so once you deploy any function tags you can execute them right from here or in the settings you can set how your function executes like based on events or based on the cron syntax or they can also be directly invoked from the http api there are tons of settings which will cover in the coming episodes next on the list is the task task can be thought of as a precursor to cloud function so instead of running cloud functions on appright server this allows to schedule http request to external endpoint this could be your own backend or your own scripts that runs based on 
your schedule so you can add the name of the task you can add schedule with cron syntax and you can perform the http request so you can perform get post put patch delete connect head trace all those requests and in the advanced option you can add http headers you can enable or disable certificate verification you can also add http authentication so this allow you to perform a perform any kind of http request based on a schedule now next option is the webhooks webhooks allow us to hit third party endpoints when server events occur so whenever certain ev events occur in our app right project we can hit the third party server for example whenever new account is created we can hit the slack webhook and then we can get notified in our slack channel or anything that we can connect to any service that uses http that provides http webhooks next item on the list is the api keys api keys are required whenever we are interacting to our app right server using the app rights server sdks or any server side methods and you can provide different scopes to your api key so that your api key is allowed only to do the things that you want finally we have the settings at the bottom here this provides us the settings for our overall app right project we can switch to dark mode theme from here and different settings we get the project id and endpoint that we require for our sdks to connect with our project we can upload a logo to our project and we can delete project also we can add custom domains we'll talk about these more in the upcoming episode and we can also invite other members to collaborate on our project this concludes day four of 30 days of app right thank you everyone for watching this tutorial hope you have learned few new things about app right and app rights dashboard thank you see you again in the next episode